Well, good morning and welcome to worship on Sunday the 31st of January. We welcome you to worship and I want to start straight away by entering into a call to worship, one which I hope calls you into the presence of God this morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven, who knew you and chose you even before the world began, who loves you so much that he calls you his own children, who has brought you from the darkness into light and filled you with his glorious power, who has prepared an inheritance for you, that will never spoil or fade, who encourages and strengthens you in every good deed and word, who comforts you in your troubles so that you can comfort others. This is our God, the ultimate source of all things and the one for whom we live. Let's worship God together. And we're going to do that right now by singing our first song this morning, which is How Great Is Our God. If you've got a songbook at home, it's songbook 64. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great is our God. Let's sing it just now. Songbook 64. Join with us and lift your voices. Lion and the lamb, the lion and the 
praising God as we sang that first song together and we're going to sing it together again just now we're going to use that beautiful contemporary hymn you call me out upon the waters the great unknown where feet may fall and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine. We're going to sing this beautiful song through together and then that's going to be followed by a time of prayer. And this morning we're grateful for Brian Lee and also to Alfie Mella for the prayers that they're going to share on our behalf. Let's sing together and then let's join in prayer. My faith will be made 
made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith God promises that when we humble ourselves, unite in prayer and seek his face, he will hear us, he will speak, he will forgive and he will heal our lands. Lord, this morning we pray for church unity. You have called us to be your children, your church, your body and have made us members with one another and joint heirs with Christ. We pray for grace and unity in the church and ask that you would help us all to live in godly fellowship and brotherly love, and may we be united as one in Christ. Father, we come together to pray as one, that we may be as one, just as the Lord Jesus prayed, that we who are his body may be one with himself, in the same way that you and he are united together in love and purpose. Dear Lord, how we praise and thank you, and worship you, for your greatest of all gifts in sending the Lord Jesus to be our Saviour and friend and for dying in our place on the cross to pay the price for our sins. Thank you that when two or three of us gathered, just as we are this morning, in your name, you are there in our midst. And thank you, Father, for the many blessings you shower on each one of us day by day. Give us graceful hearts and a willingness and desire to share with others the grace and mercy that you have showered on us day by day without measure. Help us, Lord, to demonstrate your great love and grace to all those that are across our paths today, that we may be ready and willing to be faithful witnesses for you and to give an answer for what we believe, so that many may also come to know you and accept Jesus as their own personal Saviour and friend, because they saw him in us. Lord, you see us and you hear us. Through the mass of the word today, you see if we smile or if we scowl through this mask. You hear us if we whisper a brief prayer or mutter a muffled curse. Our friends don't see or hear or know, nor do our family, nor do our colleagues, but you do. This mask takes away power, the power of clear communication. It takes away our smiles and thoughts and mumbles, though. These we know, but they are a greater mystery to others now. But not to you, Lord. You see past our masks. You hear through it, and you know. When we come to you, Lord, help us take off our masks. Put them away. Help us, Lord, to move beyond our masks. You are here for us to see and hear. Help us. Let us take off our masks. Lord, just now we bring to you all who are in special need, whether in sickness and health, poverty or loneliness, or in mourning. We ask that little extra peace and love be in their lives. Be with us, Lord, as we continue to worship together and bind us together in love. Lord, in your name we come. Amen. Lord Jesus, it is good that we can come together on another Sunday morning to thank you for being with us all this week and helping us to stay safe and well through this horrible time. 
But the snow has been lovely but cold. We've played both snowmen, played snowballs and enjoyed and enjoy ourselves. Well, the young people have. We today pray for healing for Tony Squires and Emma, also for Brian Dodd and Sue. Lord, may they know we are praying for them, being in hospital and not with their loved ones. Bless all key workers who are doing a marvellous job. We pray that Majors Den and Jane, who we meet all together one day back in our hall. God bless them. Lord Jesus, we love you and just say thank you for taking care of us all. Amen. Thank you for Brian and Alfie for sharing their prayers on behalf of us all this morning. Just now we're going to have another member of our congregation, Joan Stevens, who's going to read for us our Bible reading for this morning, taken from 1 Kings 14 and verses 1 to 6. The Bible reading this morning is taken from 1 Kings chapter 14 verses 1 to 6, and I'm reading from the New International Version. At that time, Abijah, son, Abijah, son of Jeroboam, became ill, and Jeroboam said to his wife, Go, disguise yourself, so you won't be recognised as the wife of Jeroboam. Then go to Shiloh. Abijah the prophet is there, the one who told me I would be king over his people. Take ten loaves of bread with you, some cakes and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what will happen to the boy. So Jeroboam's wife did what he said and went to Ahijah's house in Shiloh. Now Ahijah could not see, his sight was gone because of his age. But the Lord had told Ahijah, Jeroboam's wife is coming to ask you about your son, her son, for, she, for he is ill, and you are to give her such and such an answer. When she arrives, she will pretend to be someone else. So when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why this pretense? I have been sent to you with bad news. Amen. Have you ever thought about why Batman wears a mask? Or how about Spider-Man? They're trying to hide their true identity, who they really are. Do you know why? Because they're just ordinary people, just like you and me. The mask and the super suit allow them to be someone else. Did you know that Christians can do this too? We can put on masks to hide who we really are. Think about this. Superman Sam goes to church, he sings really loudly and he answers all the questions about how to honour God. All the other kids think, wow, he must really love God by how he acts at church. But if you see Sam at school, he leaves people out at break time, talks behind his friend's back. Sam doesn't act like he cares about God's opinion at school. His heart is really about bringing attention to himself, not to God. Or well, then there's perfect Patty. She always acts like everything is perfect in her life. She never feels sad or mad. Everything is just peachy. But the truth is that on the inside, she does feel sad when her friends don't invite her to play. She does get angry when her brothers take her stuff. She pretends that nothing bothers her. She doesn't want to rely on God and his strength. She wants to pretend that she's strong enough on her own. Nobody is perfect. You'll make mistakes because you're human, not a superhero. So don't hide it. Don't say that you love God and then act like you don't. 
Don't pretend to be perfect and have it all together when you know you don't really. So the next time that you're tempted to put on a mask and act like someone you're not, stop and pray. Ask God to help you to do the things that honour him. Not because you're pretending, but because you really want to please God. We're going to sing a song together just now, and I love the video to this song. It's Jesus, You're My Superhero, so just watch out for all your favourite characters in Lego form. Let's sing together, Jesus, You're My Superhero. Well friends, I hope you enjoyed singing Superhero and doing all the actions too, I hope. But just now, it's a joy for us to have Major Mark Price with us. Mark is a member of this congregation here, but he's also responsible for a lot of our work at Divisional Headquarters and we really appreciate his involvement. And just now, he's going to come and share with us his testimony. So please listen as Mark shares with us today. I've had a mixed day today. This morning it was training, then a meeting, then another meeting, and then over at Derby to do various bits of physical work. And uh, what a mixed day it's been for me. But um, I'm saying all of that because as the day wore on and I was eventually on my own and uh, doing lots of little jobs and bits and pieces, it caused me to think about the fact that I'd been asked to share my testimony. And so I began to think about um, some of the things that have brought me to today. 
as a Christian, I, I remember being uh, changed by the, the, the fact that God came into my life when I was a child. And uh, then I joined the Salvation Army. And then right up until today, through the years of officership, I'm so glad of the encounter that I had with Jesus. And I was thinking about all of those things. And then this evening, I, I was playing music on the computer and on comes I've Just Seen Jesus by the ISS. Uh, what a great piece of music. It's so inspirational. And, and to think of Mary Magdalene going to say to the dis disciples, I've just seen Jesus. You know, we read about it in, in John chapter 20, verse 18. I have seen the Lord. You know, her encounter was physical, but for us, it's very different. But I am so glad that I have had that encounter with Jesus and continue to do so every day by the people that I meet, by the things that I do, by the inspirational acts that sometimes I'm a part of. God has been really very good to me and, and I thank him every day for it. But, you know, every day is a day of seeing Jesus. And I hope that as much as that has touched my life, that it does yours too. God bless you all. We miss you at Stapleford. We know that you're there, but look forward to seeing you very soon.
I don't know about you, but every Saturday night I sit in front of the TV waiting for a programme that I never in a million years would have thought I would ever have watched. Apart from the fact that the first time that it hit our screens, our family from America were with us and they wanted to watch it. So you may be sat there now thinking, well, go on, what's the programme? Well, if I said to you, who are you? Who are you? It may help you. And if you've never watched the programme, you may well have seen the adverts on the television. And it, they say, who's behind the mask? Well, if you're still none the wiser, then obviously you're not a fan of the masked singer. The programme is quite simple in its, pro in its concept. The masked singer sings and the panel are given various clues to help them to work out who it is in disguise, hidden behind the mask and the costume. Although not all the clues that are given are true. Some are definitely red herrings thrown in to set them off course. Some voices are more recognisable than others, but are the singers disguised in their voice? And each week, the studio audience have to vote who will go through to the next round. And the characters with the least votes get to sing again. And the panel votes who is to continue in the competition and who is to be unmasked. It's a fun programme. And I must admit this year, we've been getting quite good and quite confident in a few of our guesses as to who the various singers are in the costumes. Although I must admit, last week's as the unmasking we were completely blown away we didn't have a clue but then again neither did the panel so we didn't feel too bad but this set me thinking as we are now used to wearing masks whenever we go out who are we behind the mask for some of the people who've been unmasked in the show they've said it was liberating gave them a confidence when people couldn't see who they were. I actually felt quite sorry by that, that statement, that it was only when they were hidden behind a costume and in disguise that they could be who they really were. So my first question for you this morning is, who are you behind the mask? Many people are probably thinking, well, I'm who I always was. The mask doesn't make a difference. But it's not just the physical mask that we wear that we hide behind. What about the time that someone asks you, so how are you doing? And you reply, oh, I'm fine. When really, you're anything but. For some people, it's only once they've put their wall paint on that they feel that they can face the world. Maybe for some people, they're hiding behind the mask without even realising that that's exactly what they're doing. They're wearing a disguise of sorts. But only you know how you feel and the various masks that you may wear throughout any given day. So let's look at the scripture that was shared for us this morning and see how we're not the only ones who may try to hide behind the mask and disguise our true identity. In our scripture, we find the son of Jer Jeroboam is very ill. His name is Abishar, and all the time Jeroboam is misleading the tribes of Israel in the wrong direction and doctrine. He knows the true direction to go. He knows who the true God is. He knows who can heal his son, the one and only true God of Israel. So Jeroboam, afraid that someone might see him, tells his own wife to disguise herself, take some bread and honey, and to go to the prophet Ahijah in hopes that his son may be healed. What Jeroboam doesn't know is that although Ahijah the prophet was blind, God had already spoken to him and told him Jeroboam's wife was coming and that she disguised herself to be another person. Not only that, but he also had some bad news for Jeroboam. So as Jeroboam's wife went to Shiloh and entered into the room where Ahijah was, he heard her footsteps and said to her, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another woman? In reality, he was asking, why are you pretending to be someone you are not? God knew who was behind the disguise, and in this instance, Ahijah didn't need his sight. All that he needed was God. So, 
Who are you? Who are you really? You see, we may be able to fool many people, but we can't fool God. He knows you and I better than we know ourselves. The hairs on our heads are numbered. And the things that we do to try to impress people really don't matter. The one that we need to impress is God. We need to be real for him. Matthew 5 verse 8 tells us in no uncertain terms, People honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The second thing I want to say this morning is, we somehow develop the knowledge to hide the things that we know are wrong. We try to make them look better. For instance, I'm sure I'm not the only one that threw all my dirty clothes and toys in my wardrobe when my mum told me to tidy up my room. Maybe you used under the bed. I believe once I even went so far as to pile up my clothes and all the odd bits and pieces into a pile in the corner and I made it look very nice with a nice blanket over the top of it. But the problem is, it was still all there under the blanket in the corner. So we can go ahead, we can dress up in our fancy clothes, we can put a fake smile on, but just remember, God knows everything. He knows the troubles in our homes, he sees our pain, and although you may not feel him, he's there to wipe away our tears. So why not be real with God? Let's empty the wardrobe, pull all the junk out from underneath the bed, he is, after all, the only one that really matters when it comes to cleansing ourselves within. It's no good us trying to disguise who we are. God sees beyond our masks. For some this morning, there can be many voices in our heads that wage war against our identity. We can easily forget who we are in Christ. We've been wearing a disguise, a mask for so long that we don't even know who we are anymore. For some people, they need to remind themselves daily that their identity doesn't lie in their mistakes, their struggles, their embarrassing moments, those discouraging negative voices in our heads, all the rubbish that we often contend with on a daily basis. The devil is constantly challenging believers to cause us to lose sight of our true identity. And we allow him to fill our minds with the negative thoughts that can be so self-destructive. We ask, how can we succeed at being ourselves if we don't know ourselves? Life is just like a maze sometimes, and it's easy to get lost. Everyone, it seems, expects something different from us. There's pressure coming at us from every direction to keep others happy and to meet their needs. Sometimes who we really are can get lost in layers of other people's expectations. We end up trying to disguise who we really are so that we feel we can be acceptable to God and to other people. However, if we're willing to listen and then really hear, God is constantly pouring out his grace and reminding us of who we are. He's constantly reminding us not to dwell on our failures, to receive his grace, to press on. A quote I found stated, our true identity is found when we stop being who we are and start being who we were created to be. Listen to this verse of scripture, and I'm using the Amplified Bible, and it's Colossians chapter two, verse 10. And in him, you have been made complete, achieving spiritual stature through Christ, and he is the head over all rule and authority of every angelic and earthly power. Listen to those words again. And in him you have been made complete, achieving spiritual stature through Christ, and he is the head over all rule and authority of every angelic and earthly power. As much as Jeroboam's wife tried to hide herself behind a disguise, the prophet Ahijah knew who she really was, and the same can be said for us today. We may try and hide behind the mask, 
a false identity, but God knows everything. This morning, it may be that you wish to come before the Lord afresh to rid yourself of your mask, your disguise, once and for all. And instead, listen to these words and take them to heart. Who I am in Christ. I confess I am an awesome spirit, being made in his image and saved by his grace. Totally loved by God in spite of my performance. Completely forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ who died for me. Daily empowered by the Holy Spirit who lives in me and desires to live through me. Absolutely nothing can touch my life apart from God's permission. I am a child of the eternal King, welcomed into his presence at any time and for any reason. I am heaven bound and joy filled. I am his special treasure and he knows me by name. Beautiful words by Carol and Draper. So maybe this morning you needed to hear those words. You needed to remove the mask, the disguise and to come before the Lord. And we're just going to sing together now the very beautiful song, I'm in His Hands. It's song number 848. And it may just be that as you listen or sing along, that you just want to discard the mask and the disguise this morning and come before the Lord as you are, willing to be created into the person He really wants you to be. Let's sing together.
I hope you enjoyed listening to Corinne and Vicky singing that beautiful song for us, I'm in his hands. But we're going to turn to our final song of the morning and it's number 460 if you have your songbook at home. And I'm just going to outline the chorus, no more, no more, he remembers sins no more, they're pardoned forever and he will never bring them up against me anymore. I'll hear no more of the evil days of yore. I'm a pardoned offender and God will remember them no more. So let's sing together. Have we not known it? Have we not heard it? Let's sing and really praise our Father in heaven this morning.
And let me just close with these words of a benediction. The blessing of the eternal God is upon you, redeeming grace, enfolding love, enduring fellowship, now and forever. Amen. Good morning and God bless you all.